the fashion law, one of my favorite websites. I recommend you check it out. Um, they talk about loads of um, you know, fashion related topics, loads of really cool industry news bits. I remember they had a bit of beef with a couple of people. I think they had a bit of beef with people from Diet Prada, but you know, who doesn't have beef with Diet Prada? Um, they're always um up in the tea and all that stuff. But um, I recommend you check it out. I think it's run by a, a woman that's involved in fashion law or just or she, she's actually as a lawyer for fashion brands or something along those kind of lines i forgot what the actual background of her is but i recommend you check it out regardless it's a really cool website and they've got this great article that speaks about um influencers are launching big businesses of their own and now traditional brands have to compete which is a very interesting article because you know again it, it, it's kind of um it shows the paradigm the the paradigm shifting right between the influencers and the big brands um the in, big brands go and seek out these influencers so they can tap into a particular market a particular customer base and now the influencers are gaining more experience working with these bigger brands working with uh, massive producers manufacturing meeting tight deadlines that they're then now taking that knowledge and, and applying it to their own brands or they're working underneath the big brands with their own little capture collections which are sometimes outperforming the main line it's just, it's just getting fucking ridiculous and crazy but i'll get this article up on the screen so you guys can see and we can talk about it um here it is influencers are launching big businesses of their own and now traditional brands have to compete um i think it's talking about this lady here from something navy which i wasn't familiar with um the article says in the bygone days of the pre-internet era consumers were forced to rely almost exclusively on their friends to produce for product rec recommendations a simple where did you get those jeans drove brand discovery and uh, have you tried this cream often prompted purchases magazine celebrity style were influential of course but nothing in this realm would compare to the boom that was brought about by influencers and the ability to sway the purchasing decisions of their followers for the most part by way of endorsements of the offerings of third party brands which is very interesting and very true so much so I hope i'm gonna get this little magazine now this basically speaks about it where is it here there right get one of these magazines out here which is very very true right um in my experience because again in in years gone by when i was um when i was heavily heavy in the fashion scene the thing that I used to do, the thing that we used to do back in the day was buy magazines like this, right? Old, this is maybe not this because this is a bit old, but magazines like Asanya, yeah, Asayan, sorry, or Boon or Warp, whatever those magazines were. Um, you'd buy these magazines and essentially these magazines were run by the tastemakers of the of the scene, right? Of the industry or the scene that you're into, right? These were the magazines that are run by the tastemakers, similar to the fashion magazines you get nowadays. And they had certain bits of the of the magazine that kind of profiled certain brands and stuff that you might want, like jumpers and stuff. And then they'll, they'd have basically street style pictures like this with people from the store, like star fits and stuff, whatever, that Japanese people are obsessed with that kind of bled into um, some European magazines, stuff like this, right? And this used to be the stuff that a lot of the forward thinking consumers would use as a basis to judge, as a basis to gauge what brands that they should be into, what they should be following, what style they should be having in the back of their head. And then over time, um, this obviously permeated popular culture and more people started getting into it. So it was hard, it got harder and harder to kind of keep one step ahead. And it got harder and harder to kind of find newer things because everyone was basically finding the same sort of thing. And I think it kind of translated a little bit into the fashion scene where for the most part, guys and girls were maybe buying these fashion magazines and looking at the stuff that was highlighted, products that you should be buying for next season and kind of buying them from there. But then, you know, it's not immediate, right? you got to wait a few months for the magazine to come out. The stuff that you want is featured in the magazine might not be out a few months after that. But then when it, social media came about and influencers started springing up on platforms such as Instagram and Facebook, whatever it may be, it was immediate what you wanted to buy, right? If a, if a girl wore this great top that she bought from H&M, you could go out and buy it straight away, right? And you had to, and you got to see what it was like on. It was a person that you maybe admired their style. They might have had a similar body shape to you. They might wear the similar kind of clothes to you. Um, they might just be somebody that you think is cool that you want to copy or whatever. But you could immediately buy that thing. You don't need to wait a long time to do it. And because a lot of the stuff in the beginning was a bit haberdashery, is a bit you know mixed up with thrift, it was vintage, it was run, it was runway stuff, it was high street stuff. It was stuff that you could easily get. And I think because of that foundation, for the most part, unless you're following. I don't know, Anna De La Rosa, right? Who buys, you know, entire runway looks. For the most part, most influencers have are wearing stuff that is pretty much affordable or you can find alternatives for. So it's essentially building up a lot of um, brand interest and desire because people can buy these things straight away. 
And now brands obviously want to tap into it because those are the customers that you actually want to talk to because they're so hyper specific, right? They're into this kind of girl. They're into that kind of style. They're going to buy essentially everything that she wears. And I think it's cool to see because I think, again, magazines like this are great, but essentially they've been replaced by, you know, influencers like Luca Sabati and Connor, all these kind of people. They've essentially replaced these kind of magazines, right? No one, no one buys these magazines anymore uh, because there's no need. You're just going to go and follow someone on Instagram and they're going to tell you exactly what to buy and you can buy it straight away. Um, if if not maybe a couple of months later so this article is a really good um uh representation or reflection of that um current times now let's continue um the lifestyle of an influencer has experienced many evolutions um the most significant uh likely being the transition from blog-based content which is what i was part of to the wilds of social media where billions of individuals regularly spend time which is true i think let's say blogs probably attracted millions of customers and you have to be specific you have to find the blog first of all it was hard to discover them there was no algorithm that recommended your blog that you might want to follow for the most part but with instagram accounts if you follow one you might end if you start liking their pictures the algorithm will recognize the things that you like or then start showing you stuff in the discovery page it might if you sometimes now they have the they have that option on instagram where if you follow one person it drops down a little box where you can follow other people that are similar to that kind of person it's all really cool um Instagram alone, most influencer platform of choice, boasts a roster of more than 1 billion active users waiting to be engaged with. YouTube, another popular host site, is even bigger than Gmail. And nearly as... Just mad. YouTube is bigger than Gmail. and Because everyone's got a Gmail account, right? Which is fucking nuts. And nearly as big as Facebook with over 1.8 billion monthly logged in lose users, which is the real specific thing, right? Logged in users. According to Business Insider, in these platforms, influencers found a goldmine, largely thanks to the ease of accessibility in the part of consumers. Um... All the while, another shift has been underway. Uh, roughly a decade or so into the proliferation of the one billion plus influence industry, from mega level ones uh, to the make to the much smaller scale but largely effective nano influencers, one that does not centre on where influencers are, well influencing, but what they are influencing, which is very true. On a single day last September, Ariel Sharmas managed to drum up four million in sale, four million dollars in sales for Nordstrom. That is incredible on a single day and in the process caused the retail's e-commerce site to crash thanks to a Russian traffic. The shopping frenzy coincided with the debut drop of the super influencer's permanent something navy collection. Okay, that's awesome. So she's got a permanent collection with Nordstrom called something navy that they've kind of developed in-house, right? So again, that's that's amazing because now what you're seeing is, I think in the past you had, you had it's like the Zoella, right? Who's kind of got a lot of hate online. Um, for instance, like, she gets presented with a calendar or with a makeup line that the brand has already made and then she just names the palettes or she just names the color swatches or she just um i don't know puts a picture on the front cover of the book or she just endorses it and kind of says it's hers but it's not really her she didn't really part, get take part in the uh, development it is using her to kind of introduce the product to the market but the more savvy retailers the more savvy brands are understanding of what that customer base wants they want to see the behind the scene footage of this um Ariel Sharnas going into the Nordstrom offices, designing the actual product, um, sitting down with the designers, um, getting to know what the how to how to work, the complexes of manufacturing, really honing that product. So when they finally get it, it feels like something that that lady has touched. It doesn't feel like something that just come from the Nordstrom designers. It's kind of come through her inbox. She's approved one, and then that's it. They want to feel that's actually been designed. And I think this is the evolution that we're going to see going forward. Brands actually partnering up with big influencers, creating their own little sub brand that they're going to house in house into where they're going to house in house at the brand. So it's going to be within their infrastructure and then they're going to be able to split the revenues. But then what you've got there is a more committed influencer because it's something that is again it adds to their credibility, adds to their CV. It, it brings them in a whole different light. It separates them from the influencer just willing to get free product from brands. And again, it kind of builds up brand loyalty from the customers because sometimes you're, the hope is that if the influencer pulls away, that some 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 of the customers are still gonna hang around and buy stuff from Nordstrom's. Um, it's fucking amazing. But four million dollars a day is insane. Um, the shopping frenzy coincided there. Um, something Navy collection. The Seattle headquarters retailer, a seamless extension of the Shana's dedicated old something Navy blog. Oh, awesome! So it's just a tie-in with that. Her highly followed Instagram account, which boasts 1.2 million followers, who range in age from 6, 13 to 60 years old. For the most part, for the uh, for most of nearly 10 from. For most of the nearly 
10 years that Shanas has maintained her website, her work has been tied large part to other companies. Again, you have to keep that in mind. 10 years in the game. If you're a girl out there and you're fed up and you want to get involved, you're like, oh, how did she get all the love? How do I not get any of it? She's been in it 10 years. Relax. By the way, I've sponsored Instagram posts, endorsements, and branded collaboration. Shanas and other influencers have been extremely successful at creating widespread brand awareness when they tag a dress they're wearing or a bag they're carrying. Creating brand discovery amongst their followers is a core of most influencers' power. And as many as 99% of recently polled consumers say they discover new products thanks to influencers that they follow. That is insane. 99% of people say they've discovered new things from it's, it's fucking insane which makes sense again which again makes sense why instagram are now um really pushing hard with this instagram checkout feature that i think is rolling out i think it's already in in the in the works so it's been already rolled out for the most part a feature is that you can tag an actual item on in, on instagram that can then lead somebody to then go buy through a dedicated like in um inbuilt web kind of portal that you can buy products from so essentially see a bag see a pair of trainers and purchase it all through the app um have it kind of sent away to you um again it's a really credible article i recommend you check it out. i'm not going to read the whole thing i don't want to bore you guys too much but it's a really good article it speaks about this girl um anila shanas um from something navy who then created this amazing little sub uh, a real a real kind of evolution on the capsule collections that i think a lot of people are going to start doing um this the the more the years progress we're going to see a lot of this happening i'm more interested to see what happens with the kids especially with the kids under 16 what those kind of influencers do with this kind of um, um, availability and this kind of opportunity especially the girls and kids that are involved in toys and stuff imagine that kid that's um that boy that little kid that's like you know the most um who makes the most money on youtube um with the toys and stuff imagine if he develops his own range of toys um at that kind of age he's kind of a toy influencer imagine if a kid if a guy's really into even gaming that could be an evolution of it right where the, the game is actually link up with game studios and start developing actual games actual characters and start having themselves involved in it instead of just promoting it and playing it on their stream actually being involved in the creation of the game and seeing how far that goes that would be really really cool to see but again influencer culture doesn't seem like it's going to stop anytime soon that train is just chugging chugging along and it seems like the celebrity endorsement is kind of dying in it no one really gives a shit why anyone wears that red carpet anymore in it because you know who's, who's gonna be able to afford the dose to get by an address for the most part no one um, so I guess we're going to see that continue.